Hello my Padawans, I'm your Jedi Master today, and welcome to the fourth episode in Uncovering Star Wars Lore. Now today, I'm going to be talking about the Jedi. Now the Jedi are Force-sensitive individuals who are members of the Jedi Order who align themselves with the light side of the Force. So how the Jedi started was they originally a philosophical study group on the planet Tython. Eventually, they obviously became the wielders of peace and justice in the galaxy and carried around their signature lightsaber. So the Jedi believe in peace and patience and wisdom. However, this also leads to sometimes having a little bit of indecisiveness, particularly with the Jedi Council. This often led to uh, things happening that could have potentially been avoided, such as wars, the Jedi Civil War with Revan, and what happened with Anakin, how he fell to the dark side, and even Palpatine rising to power. So the path of the Jedi is extremely difficult and it, an insane commitment to make. And it requires sacrifice and to basically be able to control all your emotions uh, to the point to where sometimes the Jedi can even be considered as not very emotional. They're kind of cold, which has led to some issues with people that they're supposed to be protecting or the Grey Jedi or the... Sith, because all other individuals use the use emotions tact, but the Jedi use their wisdom and knowledge that they know. But also, a lot of times they're a bit arrogant at the as well, which has led to a lot of conflict and clash with the Republic themselves, since the Republic is only being helmed by the Jedi Council. And their way of life is rigid. They have to hold up self-discipline, responsibility, public service. And as I said, they have to be able to control all their emotion and materialism. And while compassion is encouraged, it's not meant to be dwelled on, which is ironic considering the light side is all about helping people, but you're not supposed to dwell on helping said people. So the three pillars of the Jedi, or the tenets, are force, knowledge, and self-discipline built into the Jedi's life from the time that they become younglings to the time that they become Jedi Masters. The first pillar being the force, the constant between all things, and the Jedi contemplated the will of the force and the differences between the unifying and the living force. The second pillar is the pillar of knowledge. Maintained by the Jedi's role in the galaxy could, couldn't really be filled without a lot of studying and a lot of wisdom and basically to the pursuit to learn more in their adventure. And lastly, the third pillar, the pillar of self-discipline, basically the Jedi would follow a path of meditation and learning how to channel the Force to keep themselves balanced and not become angered during a lightsaber fight or Force duel. This meditation allowed them to keep themselves grounded and disciplined allowing them to rise above a lot of times but also like i said it could falter them at times now the jedi have rankings believe it or not despite the fact that they don't really get search in the pursuit of power they do have rankings so there's the jedi youngling who is a young child was force sensitive identified at birth taken to the temple on coruscant to be trained as a jedi put into several classes and all that to be trained to become a Jedi Knight. There's a Padawan, a youngling chosen by a Jedi Knight or a master to train under them. 
whether or not they were ready was concluded by the initiate trials which the initiate trials were tests that younglings were given to go to Padawan. The three tests, the first is the knowledge of the Jedi Code. The second is to construct their lightsaber, though it has changed over time to sometimes being their competence in meditation or lightsaber combat. And the third was to see the dark side for themselves through some sort of means. During the Old Republic era, they would often go out to the more polluted places of Dantooine and find dark siders, such as with Revan, whenever he was trained for the second time, he went to the grove on Dantooine to rid it of the dark side presence, which turned out to be Juhani. Onward to the next Jedi rank, the Jedi Knight. So, this is whenever a Padawan has successfully completed the Initiate Trials, also known as the Jedi Trials, and were granted the rank of Jedi Knight, went out on missions of their own, and don't have to have a Master anymore. A Jedi Master was any member of the Council, whether it be the High Council or the Council on Dantooine. They had shown devotion, skill, wisdom to the Force, and had learned how to successfully elevate themselves to learning the Force more fruitfully than the others had, the other Jedi Knights. The Grand Master. The Grand Master is the leader of the Jedi High Council on Coruscant. This was typically given to the oldest and wisest member of the Jedi Order. Now the Jedi also had military ranks because they were fighting several wars along with the Republic to help battle against the various Sith factions and the Sith themselves. So there's the Jedi Commander. It was granted to Padawans and Jedi Knights who take leadership position within the Republic Army and they serve second in command to Jedi Generals. The Jedi Generals was granted to Jedi Knights and Jedi Masters who served in the Republic and is the highest military rank in the Republic Army that a Jedi can get. Now the Jedi also had some occupations and we see some of these occupations. Master of the Order. This is the leader of the Jedi Order. He or she had to be voted in to that position by the rest of the Jedi High Council. Jedi Temple Guard are anonymous Jedi that guarded the Jedi Temple with lightsaber pikes. Jedi Investigator, these are the detectives that aid the police on Coruscant, Dantooine with the use of the Force. Consular Jedi, these are the Jedi Consulars who are devoted to the Force themselves and study diplomacy or science and kind of avoid a lot of the combat side like the Jedi Guardians do or the tactical side like the Jedi Sentinels do. Chief Librarian also known as the Chroniclers. They are the overseer of the Jedi Archives and the Holocron Vaults. They protect the knowledge of the Jedi and the knowledge of the Jedi and the Sith. So the question is, why are the Jedi not the good guys? Well, it's for one reason. The Jedi don't embrace enough emotion. The Sith are too emotional and the Jedi aren't emotional enough. That's why the Great Jedi are the, they are the guards of the Force. They really understand the Force. It's also why they're most powerful Force users. And honestly, it's the purpose that really makes them so powerful. So that concludes it for the three shades or the three factions for this Star Wars lore, I guess you could call it mini series. Next time, we're gonna be starting talking about some individuals, some time periods of 
the Star Wars universe. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. Tell a friend today about my Star Wars channel. It's pretty awesome. And may the Force be with you. Always. <laughs>